What do you do if your Indian ring neck is biting? If you bring home a new baby or it's just been a couple months um, and you're getting a lot of bites. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parapus Bond. And in this video, we've got um, a different photo bomber because she's kind of <laughs> blocking my mech girls. I call these my mech girls. Um, in this video, we're talking about biting. So while, of course, this is a macaw, not an Indian ring neck, Kailani, my Catalina macaw, she wanted me to pick her up. So I thought I would spend a little time with her. Uh, when, well, she is going on two years. She will be two years in just a couple of months. And she definitely went through the baby teething phase. And what I'm alluding to is young parrots all seem to go through a biting phase. Just like a baby that's teething and also like a puppy that has to bite everything, huh, baby? Um, Kailani went through that and I'm anticipating that Cami will go through that, although Kailani went through it during her first year and maybe maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe Cami, my Harlequin macaw, won't because she hasn't really done it so far, but we'll see. So that teething phase is really hard on your fingers. Hopefully your fingers and not like your face or something, but I doubt it. Um, it's probably your fingers. I do think fingers are perfect for biting, unfortunately. <laughs> and, um, you know, I want you to, number one, realize that it's not like a, I don't like you kind of thing. It's probably the opposite. I think that they wouldn't do it if they didn't like you. You can do one of a couple of things. People say that you just, you know, give them your fist or give them your finger and let them bite you or whatever it is and don't have a response and then they will stop. And actually just now she did, she did bite down on me. I didn't respond and she did stop. Okay, two is too many. I don't want you both on me at the same time while I'm making a video. Yeah, that's a little much. That's a little much. Let's see if we can do it anyway. So, um, but I don't, you know, my husband does that. He, he does let strange birds when we go, like I'm getting a queen of Bavaria and we went and there was a beautiful ruby macaw and she just really wanted like some attention. So he gave her some attention. She bit him and he let her because it's your way of saying, you know, you're not scaring me. I'm, I'm bigger than you, you're not scaring me. So um, that, that didn't work too well with the ruby, but it is one way to do it. I don't recommend it because um, I, don't, I don't like it. <laughs> That's why, because I don't like it. Okay, we're gonna send this girl flying. This one flies, come here. You ready? Are you ready? Woo! Oh. Sorry, sweetie. She didn't like the way I grabbed her or something. Uh, so you can do that. But one thing about that teething phase is it's funny. A baby is doing it because like it kind of hurts like the pressure relieves some of the pressure of the teeth coming in. And with a parrot, their beak is there. It's not like their beak's coming in. But they do go through that. So they're not like if you if you let them bite i don't think that they're gonna stop so you have to decide how you want to deal with it when uh, my parrot lets are teething they definitely go through that phase and they're biting and believe it or not those little beaks they can be like little needles and so in some ways the bite i just got from kailani was nothing i mean it didn't even mark me compared to their little beaks, sometimes they're like, hey, and it's, they're little, but still it can really not feel good. And they can also cut your skin. And granted, they're not gonna hurt you the way a big bird is. And you really have to be aware and you really have to decide for yourself because a big bird like that, if you let them, they, they can send you to the ER. I mean, they can break a bone. They, I don't know, they could probably break off a finger because where's their coconut? Here's their coconut. So if they can 
break a coconut, you know, they can hurt you. And so I think you just really have to be really aware, really monitor. I don't think there's a right way. I think there's the right way for you. And what that right way for you is, you kind of have to decide and kind of play with and figure out. But um, a couple of things that you can try. Can you help me for this? Thanks, love. When your parrot does bite you, you know, right now, bite, ah! What you want to do is not go, ah! <laughs> you want to shake them. It breaks the mode. In other words, they kind of are in a mindset like, ah, I'm biting down. And if you shake them, it kind of pops them out of it and it shifts the mode. So that's one technique that is really great because you don't get bitten and, um, or you, you know, you remove yourself right away. But it's great because it, it breaks the mode. And if you do that enough times, it is very likely that they will stop going to that biting mode because it keeps getting broken. That has helped me with my parrot. What's another trick? Another trick is to simply divert their attention another way. Like if you're getting ready to bite or something and you just um, send them flying, you know? Do something to really break the mode. There are a few other things that you can try. Um, you know, one of the things I'll do is I will grab their beak. They, it's kind of funny. Their beak is so powerful and everything. But can I borrow a beak so that I can show this, please? Okay. That was actually pretty good because she started to bite. But do you see how they're so, like right now they're, they're doing what I call beaking me, but not biting. No, no, no. So when they do start to bite, one of the things you can do is like either grab their head or if you put your hand in their mouth, you have to be brave and you have to be able to do it. They can't quite bite down like you can if you learn when you watch people who are really good with parrots One of the things that they will do is they will grab their beak first Believe it or not because then you're kind of in control of their Biggest defense because that is their biggest defense. So if you grab them by the beak See she's not like she could try to bite down, but as I put my hand back She can't bite down of course, you can't go all the way back. You have to be gentle. You have to be careful. But the idea is, what I'm trying to explain is, you want to try a couple different things. And basically, the number one thing you want to do is you want to establish yourself as alpha. Not in domination. Because if you dominate your bird by hitting or by uh, screaming or by like, throwing them against something, you're going to scare the bejesus out of your bird and you're not gonna have a socially well-adjusted and happy and loving bird. I'm, I'm proud to say that I'm not perfect. And Oh, you don't wanna go on your back now? I'm not perfect, um, but generally speaking, I have loving birds and I love that. Donut, yes. Mwah. See, grab their beak. Mwah. And then, oh, I can hug them and I'm in control of the beak, right? Hi, baby. Mwah. And I try not to um, caress the beak because I do see partners doing that a lot. The only place I'm comfortable caressing is the head. But then, you know, if you do stuff like that, they're getting the love and attention. And basically what you're doing is, it's kind of like if you ever, if you have any awareness of boat driving, not that I know anything about it, but the idea behind you know, with the ocean and the wind taking a boat off course, I understand that you are constantly like readjusting for the navigation. You're constantly getting back on course. And that's basically what you want to do with your parrot. The training, you can do direct training or you can do indirect training. And the indirect training is just constantly, come here, constantly getting them back on course. Like right now, I'm training her that when I want her to step up, I need her to step up. There you go. And now we're gonna send you flying again. You ready? <gasps> Woo! <laughs> so if they're biting you, just recognize that you're in a boat, you're crossing the ocean. So it's gonna take time and you just kind of have to keep steering them. The number one thing that's going to make the biggest difference is spending a lot of time with them. You want to spend a lot of time with your parents so that they stay social, so that they stay bonded to you. If you don't spend a lot of time with them, they could get even more beaky or bitey. 
What you doing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. High speed. Oh, mwah, mwah, mwah. See, and so I'm always watching the beak. I'm always trying to put myself in a position where I can grab the beak if I need to. Don't eat my necklace. Yes, I know. You love them. I hope this helps you greatly in getting your baby parrot or your young parrot um, through this beaking phase. It is just a phase, I promise. Um, my parrot lets even the ones that I don't have time to spend a lot of time with, the ones that, are, that I raise more to be breeders, yeah, right there. They, once they're sort of out of that young adolescence, it's kind of like they have to make it through the teenage years. And then once they're like 18, 19, 20, 21, those kinds of years relative to parrots, which for the parrot lats is like six, eight, 10 months. Then even when I have to pick them up for something, they don't tend to bite. They get so much better. So um, I promise if you keep readjusting course, if you spend time with them, it'll get better. Thanks for joining us in this photo bombing and butt video. <laughs> Be sure to subscribe so that you catch the next butt shot <laughs> and the next video. If you have any questions about your parrot, please be sure to either comment below or send us a message on Facebook. Thanks and we'll catch you next time.